Cool. Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Awesome. Uh, yeah, today I cycled here for six kilometers, um, and it's not so much as yesterday. Thanks again for organizing the tour. Uh, we cycled like 60 kilometers. So there's a lot of energy ready to, <laughs> to communicate. Um, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, we had to reschedule because of craziness at work and how to handle this kind of craziness. I'd like to talk a bit about uh, what <clears throat> we have been doing recently over the last year um, in order to improve our processes. So the, today's topic is uh, Scrum. Has anyone experience working with the Scrum process? Cool, like 60, almost 80 percent. Excellent. Um, so what I'd like to talk about today is a few topics. Um, how at the Maisy Labs we decided to use the Scrum process, uh, the introduction, like first we started with the pilot, then with the plan, and the actual implementation. So most of the time I'd like to spend talking about what how the implementation looks like and what our experiences and especially sharing what we learned about. I already wrote it down in the disclaimer of the session. This is not uh, a ready to be used instruction set for your company or for your own processes, but rather an inspiration. I'd like to share as much as our experiences as we have them. And they are pretty positive. Of course, there's also negatives um, so that we can all learn and adapt um, either Scrum or any other process to your needs. Um, my name is Josef Dabernik. Uh, you can find me as Stasio on Twitter, on Drupal.org. Uh, I've started working with the Maisy Labs two years ago, um, and I've been part of the Drupal community since 2007, um, so quite a while. Um, you can see the slides, they are online already. Um, yeah, I'm really passionate about the Drupal community. I think um, being able to connect with so many people from different countries, different cultures, all over the place is quite, quite remarkable. I'm really passionate about the open source thing in general that we're able to share without any cost. Um, so yeah, that drives a lot of my passion. <laughs> but let's just start um, with deciding. So. Deciding is something that I constantly evaluate because making decisions is hard. Um, and I decided, for example, to go to Switzerland to work with Amazi because um, I didn't get the opportunity to work at the scale with Drupal in Austria back then um, in terms of company size, for example, and in terms of experience, in terms of challenges. Um, and then at Amazi, I found a lot of great processes but we were struggling with no clear definition of how a project should actually be executed. We had a good process for sales, a good process for specification, but there was no process like Kanban or Scrum or any other, how it's actually implemented. <clears throat> so basically what we did was every week we sat together as project managers, as tech leads and management and decided, okay, this week we have these four different projects and we're going to assign person X to this project, person B to this project. Um, so in the end it was kind of juggling resources together with the group. Um, in a few, like basically the whole planning meeting is one and a half hours. So at the last 20 minutes we came to the resource planning and was was really tight. Um, so we felt like, yeah, there's a need to do something um, and we don't know how to do it. So what we did was, okay, Let's figure it out and let's hire um, a coach. So we brought a coach into the company to talk with different people on different levels, with the developers, with the management, with the project managers, and with the tech leads. <clears throat> and we formed the decision, OK, let's try it. But how are we going to do it? Um, we don't know if it really works, um, so we have to first try it out. Um, so what we started was a pilot project. We said, OK, there's this existing process, and we don't want to throw it away, taking on all the risk. Let's do one project with Scrum. Um, so we learned about all the rituals, how they should work. Uh, we formed a new team for this project, and we, we told them, now we're going to do Scrum together. Um, and that kind of worked, but it was painful at the same time, because um, one of the principles in Scrum is that you have stable resources, stable workload, um, and if we just add one project to a 
a new Scrum team, then when there's less work re required for that particular project, um, the team members will have multiple duties. They will have to report to the Scrum team, but they also will have to work for maintenance clients or for other projects. So that was a bit of interesting in, during the pilot. Um, <coughs> so after the pilot, we figured, yeah, there's some, like we know the process, we like it, but um, the pilot itself didn't really work out. Um, and we didn't really know how to structure it all because in the ideal world, um, Scrum would be implemented as you have one big project and one stable team, and then you can just, um, the team can, can fully commit to this one project, and you have one product owner um, being the client that can make all the decisions, setting all the priorities. But on the other hand, being an agency, we have maybe 10 projects, five projects, depending on how many different projects we work on. Um, <clears throat> so currently we maintain uh, about 40 to 50 projects um, as a Maisie Lab Zurich. And of course there's some fo focus projects, but there's also maintenance projects. Um, and also the question was, okay, we are a team of 12 developers. Um, if we now start implementing Scrum, do we need to split them up? We don't w really want to split up the team. It's like one big family. Um, so that was kind of hard in the planning phase. Um, in the end, uh, we decided, okay, we split up the team in two. We formed two stable Scrum teams, um, and they should be interdisciplinary. So there's front-enders, there's back-enders, there's, we also call people specifically site-builders. Um, um, the front-ender also does design. So we kind of bring in all the knowledge that is required to fulfill a project within one team. And the team size is about six now, so we have two teams of, of six developers. Um, yeah, and then we set out a plan like, let's transition all the projects into one of the other teams, and each of the teams themselves, um, based on the experiences that we have from the Scrum pilot, will figure out how to proceed, will adopt the rituals, um, but also there's a lot more ownership within the team to take decisions, to adapt the process if needed. So that kind of all started last, like a year ago. Um, we did the pilot over, over summer and then in fall we took time to reflect, to talk to the team, to have a workshop together with the coach, um, to explain the team how Scrum works. And also we set up, um, we call it M Agile, it's like the, the change team. So taking part developers and mainly management, like mainly tech leads and project managers, would, would in an iterative way also evaluate our goals, like how far are we with the implementation of Scrum, what is needed, how should it be adapted. That kind of helped us lift the process as well, and at the same time, um, in an agile way, adapt to things we found out. Um, so we started with the first stable team in fall, and the second stable team started in January. And since then, so we now have six months of experience. Um, and how we did it? Well, so we have the daily, and the Macy Lab Zurich is 20 people. And our daily check-in is at 9 a.m. It's a very short stand-up, it's like five minutes. And each of, each of us reports what the topics that they have worked on yesterday and the topics they will work on today. But as it's more like a general company stand-up, it doesn't go into any details about specific project work. Um, so that stays. We have the stand-up time frame from 9 to 10, and that allows us to like check in with everybody, to hear each other, to, to kind of connect. And then we have the Scrum team-specific stand-ups. So we do them just after the company stand-up. Each of the team uh, st 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 does the stand-up together. Um, all of the processes are so that they can also be joined in remotely. So we just um, share on Google Hangout. The team stands in a circle around the laptop and discusses with if there's somebody remote um, um, the current status. Um, and so in the Scrum standups, we are much more specific to what exactly have you been working on yesterday? Um, what are you going to do today? And what are the impediments that block you from doing anything? <clears throat> and 
For example, when we talk about the dailies, um, some of the team, one of the team prefers to go through by project, so because it's a bit hard with with all the different projects to have a big overview. So we, on the Jira board, so we use Jira for for project management. We have filters for each of the projects, and then we can we can go through the filters, to so that the team knows what is the status of each of these projects. And the other team prefers to go through per person because that, that way the person knows exactly what they focus on and can talk a bit more from their perspective. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts how you do that. Um, it's, I think both work, um, but both have um, their deficiencies as well. Estimations. Um, so I think that's a big game changer for me as well. Um, like, so my role uh, being a tech lead, I kind of shift a lot within the, with the, within the Scrum process. Um, earlier, what we did was every ticket went through the tech lead. So the tech lead would um, make sure that all the specification is there and then assign it to the team member that is most capable of this task. And then the team member will implement, and then I will get it back, and then I do the testing myself. So that creates kind of a bottleneck <laughs> situation. Um, so now with Scrum, we, we basically say everything stays in the team. Um, so the tickets get assigned between developers within the team. And also the estimation should be done by the team themselves, right? Because why should I estimate something that you then have to implement? Um, and I only have one piece of information, but the whole team can estimate much better. Um, so the estimation process works like this, that uh, we do a scrum poker. Maybe you've heard about it. Um, we will discuss quickly what is the ticket about, or everybody has read the ticket before, and in the estimation meeting, the, the scrum master says, okay, and now we estimate this ticket, and either you have cards, that everybody can show up um, a number of points or a number of hours, how much they would estimate this this ticket to be to, to be worth, or to their complexity, and then um, if everybody agrees, it's it's three hours or it's three story points, um, then it's good. And if not, if then the scrum master will just ask the outlier to say, can you can you can you tell us why you think it's a five instead of a three, and that way. The, um, by asking that those outliers, outliers, uh, the goal is not only to align the estimates, but it's also to to raise the information that, that this person might have. Because if a person estimates it much higher, that person maybe can say, "Yeah, I think the complexity of this migration is much more because I've already worked with that system, or I know that this SOAP interface is a crappy interface," um, and that way, I think the estimation meeting really provides a lot of value because it shows the team, um, like it allows the team to share the knowledge that they have about the topics and also to find an agreement of how we, how we want to do it. Um, I've mentioned story points. So the idea of story point based estimation is that instead of pay, uh, estimating on hours, we use an abstract uh, unit like a story point. And, and that has the advantage that team members that, are, ha that have a different pace can estimate together because you might always need an hour less than I do, but then we don't need to agree if my hour is better than your hour. Um, but we just agree on this on this unit, and then we have to over this over over the whole th whole sprint, we just find out how many hours uh, or how many story points a team can accomplish. If the estimation meetings uh, don't go so efficiently, maybe you need a backlog grooming meeting. So we, we didn't always have that. Um, and basically the backlog grooming meeting is about making sure that all the stories are ready and that they are in the right shape. Um, so in this case, we often split up between front end and back end. So we discuss the front end tickets a bit more deeper with the front end developers and the back end specific tickets a bit deeper with the back end developers. But Obviously, if there's tickets that affect both, then they will sit together. Um, so that way, the backlog grooming meeting can make sure that all the stories are ready in an efficient way. And the estimation meeting can make sure that we are able to, to estimate fast. Because one of the biggest pain points in Scrum meetings is that there is a lot of meetings. 
Um, and if the team doesn't have the feeling that those meetings are, are, are led in a positive way, or if the, if the team doesn't feel um, efficient in those meetings, then you have to fix that. Yeah. <coughs> so I've mentioned specification. Um, we do less specification than before because we let a lot more to be decided by the team. And instead of defining how it should be implemented, we define what is the acceptance criteria. So um, instead of saying um, <clears throat> there has to be a responsive table, I say I want to display this kind of information in two different devices. And then the acceptance criteria basically is the scenarios which, which, which will lead to, to accepting that ticket to be done. And then the developer can figure out what is the right way to actually do it. And that way I think um, that's a lot about empowering also your team members. Because I, I, when I, also, I often talk to, to, to tech leads and they often say like, yeah, it's so hard because I have to specify everything and I cannot like everything goes through me and that way I think by shifting away from over specifying everything and just telling what is the goal like I tell you this will make if you if you fulfill this criteria this will make you happy this will make me happy but you can decide how you're gonna go there um, I think that's yeah that that plays out really well <clears throat> yes then we have uh, sprint planning so basically um, the product owner, and maybe I should talk a bit more about the different roles of Scrum, how we do them. Um, as we are an agency, we don't um, have just one client, uh, or we don't have just one big project, but we have multiple projects. So um, in the Scrum theory, the product owner is usually provided by the customer. So the customer, as a product owner, represents the business needs, represents the priorities, and tells this is more important than this one, and basically the team just processes tasks from top to bottom based on the priorities. As we have um, multiple projects, we kind of need to merge in the different needs of different clients. <clears throat> so we have the, the, the former project manager is, is the PO now to the team, and the, and the former project manager, instead of telling the team exactly when, what, and how, um, rather tells just priorities and tells the team, okay, this, this client now is more important, so we're going to try to bring in more stories from this client than from the other. Um, but then in some projects where um, the project volume is really big, we actually also bring in the client um, to meet the team, like in these estimation meetings and the backlog grooming meetings. Um, we try to add the clients as much as possible, but, but because as we are talking about multiple projects, we cannot really bring in every client for every ticket. Um, but for if, if there's, for example, a project that takes more than 50% resources of the team, then we just add separate estimation meetings together with the client, because that way the client can directly talk to the team rather than needing a proxy of the that takes the information from the client and then talks to the team and the team the other way around. Um, yeah, I think that that makes it a lot more efficient, but also there's a lot more understanding of the of the goals and and the team can come up with more creative um, ideas and also the client can understand better why the team wants to take this kind of decision and we can take decisions together. <coughs> yes, um, sprint planning, what we basically do is, um, and that's interesting, I'm still not convinced, but um, at the end of the sprint planning, when we decide, okay, we're going to work on so many tickets, the team wants to assign the tickets to individual developers. Um, so that every of the developer kind of has an understanding of if they have too much work or if they have, if they have too little work. Um, and I think that's, that's valid because we have a lot of different projects and it's a bit hard to have the entire overview. But I would prefer if it was more a pool principle that just when you finish a task, you assign yourself a new task, because that way, um, right now at the end of the sprint often, it's like, okay, I'm running out of tasks, but this person has more tasks, so it's kind of, we assign in the beginning, but then at the end we have to reassign anyways, uh, which is maybe not needed. Right. Um, the review and the retrospective, um, we are very 
clear about not missing out on, on this kind of part. Um, so in the review, I think the review we, we don't do so deeply because there's a lot that has to be, that has been done, and it's if it, as it's not one big project, it's not like, and this is like the big release, and we go through all of the implemented stories of this release. But what we do is we look at the board, we see what has been finished, and then we also discuss which what hasn't been finished. And the reason why some things haven't been finished is also interesting because um, the definition of done. So you. In Scrum, you talk about when is when is something done. Um, the definition of done for us is when it's deployed to the life site, and that involves customer feedback. Like, so it goes from to do in progress in testing, internal testing is done, and then it's in demo, and then actually the team has finished their work, but then the client has to also provide feedback. And as we have like five or six different projects, um, some of the clients will not be able to react just within the sprint scope to, to make the team happy. And that's, that's still an issue, which kind of, I think, is like bad for the morale, because we are not able to finish everything. Uh, at this, and my proposal was that we say, well, we can have a, an additional board that is just for deployments. Um, but that way, the team then says, like, yeah, we don't have the full overview, and we prefer the definition of done to be harder, but to be clear. Yeah, and I understand that as well. Um, yes, the retrospectives. So um, if you're all in a room, you can just put up, uh, like what we do is we take five to ten minutes and write down notes, what's been good, what's been bad, and what we want to improve. So in, this, in these three categories, every team member writes down a few notes. <clears throat> but usually we now do it um, in Google Docs because if there's somebody not there, um, it's a bit hard for them to write s sticky notes. Um, so we just have a, yeah, a, a kind of, how do you call them, a, a Word document in Google Docs, a, a text document um, with a big table where everyone can just paste in their bullet points. And then we go through by column. So we first discuss what's been really good. Uh, everybody mentions their points um, and the Scrum Master summarizes. And then when we discuss what's not so good, we co combine it with action points. So we don't just complain, but we also propose um, what should be improved. And um, we now also started keeping track of the action points that the team then decided to want to take on, so that we can review them after two weeks if we have been able to accomplish them or not. Um, so, what's our learnings? Um, a lot. <laughs> I think um, it's a bit weird. I think it, over the over the time of the implementation, it was sometimes it was quite tough because we didn't know, for example, when we were there with the, at the end of the pilot, we felt like yeah, it's a good idea, but it doesn't really fit into the other processes that we have, and we don't know how to handle so many different projects. And this complex team structure with uh, with this new process, um, but I think we tried hard and uh, we really accomplished a lot. Um, so today, when when I talk to the when I talk to the team, um, it's really like everyone has grown a lot. Like we we identified what is hard, what and but then we always worked out like ways to solve problems. And I think. Yeah, it's a lot more, the team now has a lot more ownership on what's going on rather than just executing single tasks, which, which is really nice. Um, so I've summarized a few positives and we obviously cannot read them here. Um, oops. A few of them is, um, so I specifically looked at the retrospective, so this is kind of what the team feels positive about and uh, I think something really important for us is obviously learning new things using new technologies so when the team is able to work with Drupal 8 and so forth or with GraphQL um, getting through difficult times together so I think that's that's also really like the team spirit grows a lot with Scrum um, yeah exactly project work being able to finish a lot so sometimes the, it's after it's been hard then when we kind of get into the flow, we 
we're just like, wow, so many tickets done, awesome. Um, yeah, and I think the most important thing is like getting support and helping each other. So, um, because because you create this this instead of like always report the ticket back to me, then I will also always be the person in in order to to fix your problems. Rather, th on the other hand side, if I say, hey team, you figure it out together, then they often come up with even better ideas than I would have had. Um, sorry. Then also a lot of negatives. Um, so what's what's really hard is when when the finish line is out of reach. Like we have just too much work to do, and especially um, with a lot of different client projects. Um, sometimes it's just the the team realizes that it's just hard for us to manage the expectations of multiple clients when it gets really tough. Um, then the shifting workload. So the idea of Scrum is that everyone can work on anything, and we still work in a in a more specialized way. So the front end developer wouldn't implement the back end ticket and the other way around. Or, or um, what we try is to to make the tickets more unified, though. So we don't split up the tickets into. And now you build the the content type, and then you theme it in a separate ticket. But everything is in one ticket. But still, it goes through the process of first being built and then being themed, for example. And that way, the workload between the back end and front end can can sometimes be difficult and and requires more planning and communication, so that the, that they make an agreement on, hey, you're probably gonna get a lot of stuff to theme, so maybe we can start with the big stuff first, so that not at the end of the sprint we figure out, oh, I got all the tickets to finish, and I wasn't able to finish them. Um, yeah, something that's hard is two big tickets, um, so that they, that will also make the ticket maybe go from one sprint to the other, and if the ticket is very big, then maybe it was not so specific, so that then also the client will ask for, and I wanted this, just this tiny adjustment, um, yeah. So really being specific about uh, the ACs, the acceptance criteria is, is important. Um, obviously, when bugs and regressions happen, that's that's, for example, to we have this one big project where we have an inherited code base, and it's like whenever we touch something here, then it falls apart. But that's not really related to Scrum, I guess. Um, yeah, one big thing is the remote communication difficulties. So being an agency that that is mainly in the office and also allowing remote work is is great but it also has its challenges because people are used to talk to each other just over the table and then the person who is remote um, doesn't get that benefit um, so the team really has to learn to to talk over over the re remote communication channels like slack um, if needed and or we, we organize calls to, to sort it out. Yeah. Um, and then some action points. So something that we've been struggling with in, in meeting was um, the, the responsibilities of the, of the product owner, of the scrum master, the team, sometimes also the tech lead, that we feel like... So the idea of scrum is really that there's, there's, no, there's nobody telling the team how to do it and what to do, but still, we are used to kind of the view that the leads tell <laughs> tell the people what to do, um, and also the scrum master role. So we have first tried it in a way that I was the scrum master. So I was scrum master for two teams, and I figured like I cannot really at the same time um, be aware of what's going on in both teams um, at that level. So I delegated the scrum master role to developers. Um, and I think they do a really great job, but, but they also struggle with having two duties. Like, development is obviously more important than being a scrum master. So in an ideal world, um, and that's on my agenda, like, I want a real scrum master um, for the team. Um, yeah. Assigning tickets, so that's something... Yeah. I think I will also constantly evaluate, I will, or I'd like to hear your, your ideas of if anyone's using Scrum, do you assign tickets or not? Um, how does it work for you? 
Um, it's really important that we teach the process to clients um, so that they don't abuse the process or that they properly or in the in the positive way that they actually figure out how the process works and then the clients themselves already provide the acceptance criteria and and interact in, in that way. Um, yeah, communication improvements. And something that's important is that, uh, well, that's maybe you know that, but um, <laughs> estimations are ranges. So when we internally estimate something, when we, until we externally communicate it, we, we have to inform the client that the estimation is more like a range. Yeah. All right. Um, so, like my roundup of the experience with Scrum so far is um, there's a lot more ownership going on. Um, it makes it a lot more transparent as well. Um, like if there's, for example, also if there's somebody really a high performer, then they can just take on more duties. Um, if there's a low performer, then it will be maybe more visible, but I don't think that's a problem. That's more like a, an opportunity to talk about it and figure out what's the right way to move forward. Um, I think we, we got a more flexibility and so we create less bottlenecks um, in terms of of preparing the work like everything has to pre if everything now not doesn't have to be fully specified but the team can specify themselves um, then there's less bot bottlenecks from top down um, yeah I think really the, the quality has improved a lot for example by having team members test each other if they just yeah, they just learn together and they have improved a lot on that. Like if one one team member never had to test and now the team member has to test and the team member would just think a lot more differently about code than, than before. And yeah, it's, it, I think it was also a big, a big motivation source. Um, yeah, and it's a constant learning curve. We never stop learning with Scrum. Um, yeah, that was like a big overview. I'd really love to have a discussion about it and I'd also like to, to, to thank the sponsors. <laughs> yes. So our, week, our sprints are two weeks long. We have we don't we don't measure the average response time, um, but we have like if there's a blocker ticket we have to respond within two hours and we we fulfill that. Um, but well, responding to a ticket is um, doesn't mean it's been fixed. But yes, and I haven't mentioned that, so we we call it a uh, fast lane. So we have um, so in the Jira. Like there's the active sprint and then there's a fast lane sprint where these tickets can get added. And every day at the stand-up we look at the fast lane and decide if we can take that in. It's, uh, it's, it's painful because it gets abused. Um, at the same time it's the only way to make sure that it's get, getting done. Um, what I've heard that other, other teams do is that they have an additional Kanban board for, for maintenance tasks. Um, and I think it would be interesting to, to try it out to see, okay, um, our, let's say, 70% project work we plan with Scrum and the rest we do with Kanban. Um, because like the idea in Kanban is also that you have different service levels. So like, let's say a blocker ticket for us is within two hours, a critical list within a day, um, and the others we don't have to find. Yeah. In the end, what we do is, in terms of priorities, the POs um, make sure that it gets into the sprint that the client needs it. And if it has to be done earlier, then it goes into the fast lane to be done within the current sprint. For this to happen, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Unless, it's Unless it's a blocker, then yeah, yes, then it gets escalated immediately. And also, we have a separate DevOps team. So if there's, if it's just about hosting, 
that that doesn't that doesn't uh, affect the, the 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 developer teams. And maybe I should add, like, so in Zurich we have two teams, and then we have one team in Austin and one team in Cape Town. So we we now have the the Scrum process for four teams running. Yeah. So yes, we have, so we we call it as well like Sprint Zero um, to, so basically also like research tasks or anything that the team should work on goes into the, goes into the general scrum process. So it's, it can be like a, a research task or an architecture task um, if it's not, if it's not defined yet. Um, there's also, so I think we're not fully agile in the way we we sell everything. So we already do uh, pre-estimation with the with, with line items that are like pre-estimated, but our offers clearly state that this is just a, a rough estimate. And then in the implementation, um, we constantly adapt it. Um, but in order to to fix a budget or to to talk to the client about how much they want to spend with us, in the beginning we write we write a classic offer. And then does the client accept this process? Yes, yeah. So I mean the pre estimation and the mm -hmm. yeah. Basically to the, to the offer the Yeah. Well they they don't have any choice. Like <laughs> it's uh that's part of the contract. Like we don't we don't do fixed price offers because we know the never the client never want the client never knows what they want in the beginning, and we don't know what the client wants in the beginning. So we do fix price, but we don't do fix price and fix scope. Like we always tell the client, if you want the price to be fixed, basically what's going to be variable is the scope. Um, and you did this before applying Scrum? Yes. Yeah. So we we had a good setup of the of of the of the contracts to to kind of secure that flexibility. But what we provide the client is like a transparency that we give them but, uh, the, the, the updates on the budget. They have access to all the Jira time locks. So it's not like we can fake anything there. Um, and maybe what's also interesting mentioning here is like Scrum act obviously generates overhead. And we were asking ourselves like how should we, are we able to charge that overhead? Because we, for example, in planning estimation stand-ups, we discuss different projects. And what we now came up with is just a formula that we we build this, we build the internal teamwork on uh, on an internal project, and then we split it up depending on how many tickets and how many story points we have worked for on the client. So they kind of get charged based on the amount of tickets that you generate for us and the and the value that we generate for them. And yeah. I, I, I really like that because I think everything, all of this process is really important to be able to deliver a higher quality. And if we were not able to charge it, we would always try to reduce it. Yes. Correct. Correct, yeah. So we don't measure specifically per project because um, that depends on each each uh, sprint's planning. Um, but we basically measure the velocity of the entire team over each sprint. How much has the team committed to, how much was added, how much um, was left at the end and how, much, how many hours did we spend on. So we kind of already always know, like on based on the resource planning as well. Like if there's a one or two team members not available uh, because of vacation, we can we can estimate how many story points we'll be able for the next sprint, but also in general over the over the next month to tell the customer, well, we're gonna need this kind of amount of time, or you have to reserve so many. 
percent of our availability to be able to complete so many story points for you. Yeah, but the, the reporting at the moment is not like we definitely want to improve the reporting because it's it's like a manual process at the moment to 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 get out the data from Jira. Um, we have started working with some Jira APIs to to automatically cal calculate um, like the tracking of how much time has been spent, how much story points have been implemented. Um, but it's really rough, and I've I have yet to find people that 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 know good Jira reporting. Like if you know, let me know. <laughs> Yes. You said you were looking to create a post of Scrum Master. Um, so do you think that's a full time job? And if so, what else would you be doing? Um, like I see that it's very busy at the beginning of the sprint. So the Scrum Master in in the theory and I have not really <laughs> uh, or so a team can have a full full time scrum master and I think that the Scrum Master can work on those reports, the Scrum Master can work on um, fixing the impediments that the team has, the, the Scrum Master can constantly coach the team on the process, making sure that um, talking to the PO, talking to the clients, um, I think the Scrum Master could be a full-time position, but uh, obviously it's, it's something that easily gets cut down because uh, we don't have any official Scrum Master at all at the moment. Um, so I'd also be happy with a Scrum Master for two teams to start with. Um, does anyone have a Scrum Master? Okay, sure. I think um, the difficulties with the remote workers don't don't come because of the process. Actually, the process helps a lot because the remote workers are on all those calls and they get a lot of more information than they got previously. But maybe previously, we would always know that, okay, for the remote person, I have to prepare everything perfect. And now, the maybe the process makes it a bit more visible that, that there's a lack of information to be written down, for example, um, how we can fix it. So a lot of the fixing, I think, at the moment what we do is we improve the communication in making the team aware of implications of too little com communication so that the team learns to communicate better. But also for us to like, yeah, it's, it's more like now observing the right way, like, um, what has to be documented where, um, that kind of things. Like how many different Slack channels do we need? Um, basically our agreement is that Slack is good for, for keeping in the loop, but actually documentation has also to be written down in, in Confluence, for example. So it's concise. Um, but yeah, I, it's definitely something that more and more gets important. Also we have cross-team collaboration over different places with Cape Town and with with Austin um, and yeah don't I don't have all the solutions <laughs> yet but but we're, we're looking at them Mm. Yeah, that's what I hear a lot, yes. Yeah. 
I think it's it's a bit difficult for us to give up the culture of being in the office and um, you know like um, the the direct interaction, direct communication is has a lot of value as well. Um, but I understand if you will if you want to fully be successful with remote, then you have to think fully remote. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. So we have them on Tuesday, we start one team, and on Wednesday, we start the other team. So they are pretty synchronized. Um, well, we we felt like yeah, one idea is good, the other is also good. Um, like, I think the advantage of having both teams start at the same time is that when one team figures out it's really bad, then they can kind of plan together. At the same time, if you would have it interleaved, then you can yeah you can handle off work that you have figured after the first sprint planning. You have a week of time to try to hand it off to the other team. Um, in general, like, yeah, it didn't feel like, a, it didn't feel like uh, we need to change it from one to the other at the moment. It's good, but I can also very much envision to have it every other week. Like, for example, if there was one Scrum Master responsible for two teams, then maybe the Scrum Master would prefer to have, to have that Correct, yeah. So, maybe it's an idea. Yeah, let me think about it. How long does the coaching phase uh, was? Um, so it was, was like half a year. Yeah. Um, I don't have the numbers on the top of my head, but we probably had like up to, so we had like two or three bigger workshops with with more team members and then the the change team would meet like uh, six times with the with the HR coach <coughs> to kind of first set it up what's the vision and then what are all the problems what are all the the questions that we have and then the the coach didn't do so much rather than guide us into a process of where we ourselves um set goals, ask questions, and try to fix them. Yeah, there, there was like the, the, there was a core team, but also the coach had a session with the entire team to, to coach them. But for example, the coach didn't interview everyone individually. Uh, that was more like up to ourselves to, to have the information from from the rest of the team. Uh, yeah. Cool, I think it's about time, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.